let's put a but, uh, button down and let's put it down here in the corner and let's set it, uh, its anchor points to be bottom and right. right. And that way when we resize, then the button will stay anchored in the right spot. Let's put a layout and let's put a button in this layout. And again, in FireMonkey, you can have components that contain other components. So we can put a button here and we can anchor that button to the bottom and right of the layout. That way, when we change the layout, it's anchored in the, in the proper place. But notice when you have layouts and you might have something anchored on the form that you should take care because you could run into a situation where because of anchoring, uh, the button that's anchored to the form might disappear because there's something else that's that's not anchored on the form. So what we, what we would do in that case is better would be to anchor the bottom and right of the layout. That way, as I move things, then the layout is anchored and the button is anchored so they don't uh, collide with each other. Or just put all your components inside layouts as you lay them out over your application. There's two additional layouts that are available for, for C++ and XE3 and FireMonkey. There's the T flow layout. And the flow layout, let's put that up here and let's put some components in it. We'll put a couple buttons and uh, maybe another button, button and an edit box and a list box and another button. That's, uh, well, that's in the list box. Let's move it into the flow, into the flow layout. And then the flow happens based on the size uh, of the flow layout itself. There's a couple choices. There's many properties, but there's three that I usually look at. One is the flow direction, and that choice is either left to right or right to left. So now the buttons are flowing uh, from right to left. The so three is on the right, four, five, six, and so on. And then, then I did the edit box, list box, and that. Let's put them back there right to left. And there they are. Now, there's two other that you might care about, and there's the horizontal gap, so you can set that to, oh, here, I didn't want to get uh, compiled, but there's nothing to compile. Anyway. But then, right, here we go. Uh, let's go and set the horizontal gap to four. And now notice there's a little horizontal gap between components in the flow layout. And also there's a vertical gap, so let's set that to four. And now there's a little bit of separation between the the different component. So horizontal gap, vertical gap, and right to, uh, flow direction, right and left, are, are three of the properties, and you can explore the other property. There's also a, a T uh, grid layout, and let's put that up here. And what a grid layout does, it says that everything that you put inside of it is going to have the same height and width. So if I put some buttons and I put an edit box and uh, a list box, right? usually you'd use this for button bars, for example, where you have a whole uh, grid of buttons. And there's a couple of properties that you can play with with, uh, with grid layout. There's the items width and items height. So let's set this to 80. And let's set this to 80. And now, again, we can change all the controls that are contained inside of the grid layout um, are associated with uh, whatever the grid layout is, all the buttons and edit boxes and so on. All right. So layouts, grid layout and flow layout, 